Hey, what is up guys? It's Double Winning, and today I've got a uh, little uh, Rengar ranked gameplay. I know uh, I just had a ranked gameplay up against Renekton, um, and you guys seem to enjoy that. Um, and so this is actually in my series to plat, so I'm pretty excited here because, uh, um, you know, if I, if I do win, this is uh, my first game. If I win, you know, three out of five, um, then I'll get promoted to platinum, which is a you know, big accomplishment for me because I'd never been platinum. I mean, obviously, because otherwise I would still be platinum. Um, anyway, uh, to go over my runes and masteries here, uh, I am taking uh, flat AD quints and then uh, armor penetration uh, reds. I think I'm saying that right. Yeah. And then uh, armor yellows and magic resist blues. Pretty simple stuff. Um, and then I, I actually really liked starting Doran shield before. And so I decided to give it another shot here. Um, the reason I really like uh, Doran Shield is, I mean, it gives you 100 health, 10 HP regen per 5. So after they buffed it, the regen's actually really nice. And then it blocks 8 damage from basic champion attacks. And uh, some of you guys might be wondering, like, why did you get that against Elise? You know, and you can just... So before I go over that, let's just... Uh, we're going to go over here, right here real quick to see why I got this first blood. So um, if you... Pay attention, I'm basically always jumping in, getting in range of her, and then using my bullet strike. And everyone knows, like if you've seen any of my videos, you know, check out my guides and my other gameplays as Rengar. I love level two cheesing, and the way you do that is you get up enough fury here, so there's four stacks, there's five stacks, that means I get another skill. And then at this point, I just needed to ignite, get an auto attack off, and then another auto attack. And uh, she actually tried to retaliate there, which was kind of her mistake. Um, if she leveled her repel, or maybe if she flashed away, she might have been able to get away. Um, but she got a little cocky there, maybe, or just uh, didn't have the reflexes to quite get away. But what I was going to say before, um, really, what I really like about uh, um, what I really like about Doran's shield is it's just a solid pick. Um, if you're not really afraid of getting ganked early on, um, then you know that's it's it's a really nice pick. And it's really nice if you don't think you're, you know, gonna, um, like, if you don't really want to waste money on, like, a like a red pot. You know, if you don't think you're just going to dominate the lane. And in this situation, yeah, I did get, um, I did get a fortunate uh, first, or no, it wasn't first blood. They got first blood, but I did get a fortunate kill on her. Um, but uh, normally in an Elise matchup, I would not expect to get a kill at all. Um, just because Elise is a really strong laner. And I know a lot of you guys are saying, probably thinking, you know, oh, Elise is AP damage. Like, why would you get a Doran shield, you know? And uh, I can totally understand that thinking back when uh, Doran shield did provide armor. But as you can see, it actually does not... Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, it does not provide armor anymore. It's actually just health, health regen, and blocks 8 damage from basic attacks. If you combine this with the defensive masteries, you are you end up blocking, like, 13 uh, damage from basic attacks. And... Um, that's like really, really strong in lane against someone who pokes. Um, if you can see here, uh, Lisa's having to use all of her mana and she's not actually able to run me down. Um, and this is a combination of me having good health regen from the actual Doran shield and then me just spamming my rotations here. As you guys should be doing as Rengar since he is a manaless champion, you should be just spamming your rotations. Um, okay, so this right here, you guys know I'm all about trying to turn around ganks. So at least did not respond here well to Jarvan coming to gank. So I figured I would mess around with this Jarvan a little bit and see if maybe there's a way I can make a play here. Um, I don't have Ignite up. I have Ignite up in about you know 20 seconds here. But right there, I actually... I'm able to blow the Elise's flash because she got really greedy, decided to dive me under tower. I used the empowered bullet to actually snare her there, and so she panicked and decided to uh, flash away. And this is where, uh, this is where once you get more comfortable with the champion, you can start to do stuff like this. So I knew um, if I could get my fury up, you know, use my cooldowns here, um, I could get a little bit more health here. And Elise has 150 health, and I have 300. Of course, Jarvan is coming back up here. Um, because he does see that I am sticking around. But if you look in our jungle, we've actually got Rise headed up, and he's trying to bypass any wards he thinks might be there. Um, so I've got my Empowered W ready. So that means it's going to give me another, let's see here, 160 health. So I, I just got that there. So I have 560 health. Elise has 170 health, and uh, Jarvan has um, 430 health. I actually hit level 6 here, use it in the bush, so I'm able to jump on, basically insta-blow up um, this Elise. I ignite her that way. That's exactly why I ignite her there. 
is because I knew she would repel if I wasn't quick enough, and that way I could use my empowered skills on Jarvan, someone who would not be able to just throw up in the air and go, blah, blah, you can't get me. So I threw the ignite so that she would actually die in her repel, which actually ends up giving me a double kill um, at uh, just under seven minutes there. So I'm starting out the game three and oh. Um, so, you know, like if you're getting ganked, you know, and it's not like a surefire thing, if they don't respond well, mess with them, you know, try and make a play off of it. If you have, um, if you have a, a character who can pull plays off, try it you know you always want to push your limits there um to try and uh try and get better at the champion as well as make game breaking plays you know if if they come up to gank you and you get kills like not only have they wasted their time but you've like you, you've completely wasted their time you know you, you ended up getting an advantage off them creating a disadvantage for themselves the disadvantage being that they wasted their time here um and so you know i jump up in the back line Throw some harass on the Elise, dodge the stun there, throw my bullet strike, and now I've come up ahead in that trade. And you can see here, she's spamming auto attacks off on me. But like I said before, this Doran shield is doing work, blocking tons of damage from that auto attack. But, you know, I also do want to respect her as a laner, so I did actually get a Hex Shrinker. Um, and that's because, uh, you know, she does do good magic damage. And normally you'll see me rush like a Brutalizer, but I still was kind of in this mindset that I didn't think I was going to keep killing this Elise. Um... And so maybe looking back, I could have got a Brutalizer, but I still thought um, the Hex Drinker was a pretty solid choice to absolutely shut down the lane. So, like, there's absolutely no way she can make a comeback here. And so um, you'll see my ult come up here. Um, you know, if you look at the bottom left, I've got the cooldowns there. I do have flash up, so I'm a lot stronger than her um, at this point because she does not have flash up. If you remember back when I... Uh, when I rooted her under tower, she had to flash away. So um, there's probably about a minute left on that. And it's pretty simple as Rengar. You just... Um, absolutely annihilate with bush control you just jump in you spam your skills and you get uh, constant sustain because um, like you see I i'm getting 200 health every full rotation because i pretty much always use um use my empowered w unless i'm going for a kill then i'll usually use empowered q or if i need the cc i'll use empowered e it's pretty simple you know it's, it's pretty straightforward there and uh jarvin's coming up here um and like i said in my previous video uh i definitely would want to probably change where i have my wards um just because you can see it wasn't exactly the most useful ward there um, because he's coming from the other direction. And so we're going to we're gonna rewind here um, because I'm going to show you again example of me. I know. Look at, the, look at both of their healths here. So we're, we're just going to slow this down real. Look at their healths. 500 and 500. They've blown their combo on me and I still have 700 health. I still have my ult here. So I have to make a decision. I'm going to ult. They lose vision of me. Can I kill one of them, especially Jarvin who has double buffs? Because if I can, like I said, it's a win-win there before. So I activate, um, you know, I use my Empowered W to make sure I get the heal because that's the main portion I want because it's going to give me a heal as well as it's going to give me extra armor and magic resist. Because of this, um, it allows me to uh, tank up a little bit more here. And so I actually retreat to the bush because my Hex Drinker shield has popped. They ignited me and then they back off because they're scared. But I'm, I'm, I'm big ball, you know, I'm double winning. I have my Ignite up in four seconds here. And you best believe I'm going to try and make a play. So she throws her spider out into the bush here um, to try and kind of uh, uh, scare me out. And um, I realize I'm low health. I realize Jarf is there. I realize Elise is there. But I'm greedy. And I truly think, you know, I can uh, I can get someone here. So um, if you just give it a one second here, we're going to see uh, what kind of play I go for here. So, um, of course, I want to uh, use my bullet strike uh, to try and build up stacks here. Um, but I also want to be safe here. So I actually decide to pull back a little bit here just so that... Uh, um, I can get the creeps closer here so I can actually heal myself up. So I Q and watch. You'll see me W so I can get some free health here. Now I have, now I'm even with this Elise, even though she did just use her skill on me. Um, but all I need to do is close the gap on her because she does not have her ignite. So as you can see, I'm still spamming the rotation of my skills um, because it's always something you want to do as a Rengar. And uh, I get the level up there. I'm level nine. That gives me a little bit more health here. Um, I'm just trying to get my rotation here. So once I can get a little bit more health here, I can be totally safe in uh, engaging on her. Um, so I have the rotation up here in about one, about two seconds here. So I've got my Q up, about to have my E up, and then right after that I'll have my W up, or E and then, yeah, yeah. And then so now I have my full rotation, so I know if I can actually get on her, which I bowl a striker, I have the empowered W, I hit her with the W, I hit her with the auto attack and the Q, and I actually ignited her there. Again, when she goes up into the repel, so she just dies when she's up on the, the canopies or whatever, wherever that spider lady goes when she uh, uses her repel. So, um, you know, ignite, super good against Elise. <laughs> you just throw the ignite on, she's up in the, up in the top, you know, waiting for her cooldowns. So all, all the while, she's just dying. So, um, that was really good here. And um, 
you know, as Rengar, you definitely, as any really assassin, you want to always make sure you're making uh, plays with your team. Otherwise, even if you dominate your lane, you're not always going to be uh, the most beneficial for your team here. Um, also, uh, totally forgot, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to 1-3-Utcrack, uh, which I guess you guys can totally uh, guess what that means. <laughs> but crack. Um, but yeah, as an assassin, you want to make sure that you're roaming um, once you've completely dominated your lane here. Because if you look at the, the stats here, uh, Zed is actually 3-0. So he's about as strong as me. Um, uh, he has about 20 more CS, but I have a, an extra kill. Um, so we're about even there. Um, Ryze gets a kill after he was 0-3, so that was good. Um, that came from me roaming there. Um, Trist is actually 2-0 and up 23 CS on, uh, or 25 or whatever. So um, CS on... Ezreal and Ezreal, you know, has got a death and stuff like that. So my lane is the only lane that's winning right now. Um, and so it's really my job to do a lot of roaming, completely destroy my lane. This is part of the reason why I kept going for those outplays on Jarvan and uh, at least there because I knew um, if I could if I could secure a huge advantage, then I might be able to um, translate that better to um, the other lanes here. And so uh, Elise just gets ganked by Zach. You know, she tries to repel away. Zach uses ult. It's pretty standard stuff there. She dies. Um, if you can see my items there, I have built the Brutalizer now because I did want to um, get some extra damage because it uh, looks like I am going to have to carry this game pretty hard. I can't really afford to... Uh, get too much tankiness because it looks like I am going to be a primary damage dealer. Um, my team was actually talking to me about, um, you know, oh, Triss late game, not that big of a deal because Rengar can just blow her up, um, which you'll actually see later on in the game. Um, I mess up a few times. Uh, she gets a Blade of the Rune King later, and Triss can actually do pretty well kiting if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. So um, I believe I'm just going to go back here by myself. A Kindle Gem. Um, the Kindle Gem, you can see in my Rengar guide, Kindle Gem plus Brutalizer is a super good combo because it gives you a, a nice set of a cooldown reduction um, as well as, you know, it's a little bit of help there. And uh, cooldown reduction is really, really nice on Rengar because it gives him a good rotation here. And uh, this is something you want to always make sure you can do as an assassin. And that's find a pick. I found a pick here. Jarvan's got red buff. He has 1,000 health. I use my ult. I've already activated my Q to go for the combo. I let it gain a little bit. I jump on him. I use my Q. I use my E. I use my W so I can, I'm a little bit tankier under the tower. I get the kill. I walk away with, you know, 400 health, and I have a red buff, and I've managed to kill um, Jarvan there. So I uh, just pick myself up another kill, which this will also allow me to um, get a little bit of damage on the tower, I believe. But I think I back up, yeah, because I don't want to get hit by the Blitz hook. And so Blitz is actually chasing me. You know, I know I got to dodge the hook, so I get to the creeps, and at this point, you know, he's not going to hit me with the hook. So I'm just like, whatever, son. And uh, then I think I just go, yeah, I go up top here because Leona was pinging, you know, oh, come get this Elise, you know, she's only 0-4, totally worth uh, spending your time. Not really, but that's okay. Um, and so I decided to go farm the lane, and then I think I go uh, to Wolves here, and I should base after this. Oh, it looks like, no, my team actually needed help, so I decided to uh, um, push mid lane because they weren't team fighting anymore. And um, I make a call here to go ahead and get the mid tower um, just because I knew that... Uh, I knew that we were, you know, all grouped, and they weren't really in a position to stop that. So um, that was a really good uh, collapse there. And that's one thing you want to make sure you're doing in solo queue um, is, you know, you've dominated your lane, transition it to other lanes as quickly as possible. Get the mid tower, get the bot tower, pick up free dragons, get wards on their blue, get wards on their red. You know, um, things that'll actually help you uh, uh, help your teammates out because you've already dominated here. Um, if you look at the team goal, it's twenty-five thousand and twenty-three thousand. Um, the only reason of that is because um, I have a pretty huge advantage over Elise here. But, uh, you know, Zach has... Oh, actually, Zach's been doing actually pretty well now. Um, but you can see, you know, Leona's behind uh, Blitzcrank because, you know, got more deaths there. Um, and Blitzcrank has a gold per five. Um, Ezreal has about 30 CS behind the Tristana as well as having... Uh, the Tristana has a ton of kills there. Um, and then uh, Zed is way ahead of um, uh, Rise by about 30 CS and some uh, kills there. And so, uh, again, I try and catch out this J4 here, and uh, he's actually going to flash over, and I fail flash, which is pretty embarrassing, but uh, we actually end up do picking up the kill here. Uh, sorry, if I missed that there, but, you know, Zach jumped on him and he died. Um, and now, at this, at this point, though, Zach's pretty caught out, so he's fighting a 1v4. Um, we jump in here to try and... Uh, um, basically use his uh, use his passive as a bait here, and so we end up picking up Zed, so that was really good for the team. Rise gets pulled in by the Blitzcrank. I jump onto the Elise, instantly blow her up, and then uh, we kind of back off here because uh, there wasn't really much more we could do, so um, uh, Zach's passive ends up getting us quite a few kills there, and we only lose Rise, who, um, you know, it, it is already kind of behind, so it wasn't that big of a deal here. Um, then Leona jumps on the... Uh, 
uh, jumps on the uh, Blitzcrank there, and we're able to get a kill for Ezreal. And then uh, I throw the old Bola, you know, give him with the old battle cry, or battle roar, whatever you want to call it. And we end up killing Tristana there. And if you didn't catch that before, Zack ended up actually dying to uh, just the tower because he decided to tank it a little bit too long. Um, so that was kind of too bad because otherwise he had been doing really well. Um, I am... I, I can't believe, like, this just... I almost got away from that tower. Um, if you look here, like, I started tanking tower here because I believe I hit uh, Jarvan with Ebola when he used his Cataclysm. Let's see here. Oh, no, so it's just because the creeps died. And then uh, I actually get end up getting executed by the tower there, which is really... Um, you know, not that bad here because um, I actually find out here in a second that an execute doesn't reset your kill streak. Um, I know, like, it, it won't... Uh, it won't... Uh, like change the fact that you're worth more gold, but I thought it would like aesthetically change the kill streak. So like if you get a kill, it won't be like legendary. But uh, you'll see here in about a second uh, when I get another kill, it's gonna it's gonna say I'm legendary. So my team is fighting here, so I decide to use my ultimate um, to jump in here. I uh, jump in, I almost killed the Zed there, and then uh, Tristana starts fighting me. And at this point, I realize oh I am kind of screwed here. So luckily, I do end up getting a kill on Blitzcrank, and then my team comes to assist me, and I get away from the big boss Tristana, who actually is super strong right now with uh, her Infinity Edge and Bilgewater Cutlass. Um, Infinity Edge hitting like a truck there, and uh, I get a little greedy here, and uh, I decide to jump in, get myself a kill off on um, uh, off on Tristana there, and then I jump around you don't know, do a little jump up jump up and get down um and then our bot tower we actually get it um from the creeps there and uh i decided not to use my w on the minions which is really dumb there could have been risky but that's okay uh if you see there i did pick up the bone tooth necklace so it's pretty similar to what i have in my guide video um y'all have my guide my rengar guide in the description so you can check that out if you want to learn more on how to play rengar um the only difference really i would say is about the doran shield uh i would try doran shield out if you if you want i definitely like it when i I uh, didn't really think about using it before, but as you can see, I've got the Brutalizer, I've got the Candle Gem, I've got the Bone Tooth Necklace for the, the free AD there, and uh, I think I don't actually buy it. Oh no, I sell the Doran Shield. Um, do I get a BF Sword? Let's see here. I have 2100 gold, so I think I was thinking of what to get. I think I might end, yeah, I end up getting a BF Sword because I'm going to build this into a, a Bloodthirster because, you know, you want to get maximum uh, AD because his AD scaling is absolutely redonkulous. Um, the uh, the Battle Fury, uh, Ravenous Hydra, um, Battle Fury is like a Dota term. I don't even play Dota, I don't know why I said that, but uh, I initiated a team fight here. Um, I didn't get enough, I didn't really quite get the damage I would have liked off on here, and I actually just end up taking the tower um, while the team is um, pressuring the, the enemy team there, but... Uh, you know, it did end up getting a pretty fortunate team fight, which ends up getting us um, an inhibitor, so that's okay. Um, as you can see here, I'm 10 and 1, um, but I am still considered legendary just because my one death was uh, a, a suicide to the tower, which uh, you know, didn't give them any credit there. And uh, I think I have to wait like 20 gold here to get uh, my Bloodthirster here. Oh no, I decided not to wait the 20 gold, instead I decided to clear this wave, and then I think I might head back after that. Oh, nope, I decided to actually, uh, oh yeah, because I was going to go back, and then they were like, we're going to try Baron, and then they get absolutely dominated, because we had a pink ward, which gave us vision, so we picked up a double kill, and then Baron was super low, so we're just like, um, alright, like, this is actually, like, a really good team play, though, here, watch this, let's go, but let's go back here about 30 seconds, um, so if you check out what's going on here, um, uh, we've got the pink ward there the whole time, so we know they're trying to get Baron, um, you know, uh, Rise jumps in here, is trying to, you know, be a man, and then I jump in, Zach's already blowing his passive, and I jump in, my AoE for my, uh, double W absolutely demolishes the team, and then I just kind of slash him apart at that point, and then Baron is just like, oh no, I'm weak, don't kill me, and we're like, Baron, you're dead, like, forever, I hate you, and so we end up getting a, a nice Baron there, and, uh, um, you know, and now we, now we just need to provide pressure here, because at this point, we've created a nice, almost 10k gold lead, um, and I think I, I think I get my Bloodthirster here, um, or I might decide to tank up, I can't remember what I do, yeah, I get the Bloodthirster, but I do realize at this point that I do need to tank up, and what I should have done, is I should have gotten more armor here, um, I, uh, I should have built, uh, instead of Kindle Gem, maybe I should have built toward, uh, Randuin's Omen earlier on, um, because you'll see here in a little bit, this Tristan is actually going to dumpster me uh, because I try and fight her without my ultimate, which is incredibly important to try and to get the kill on Tristan because I need to blow her up instantly. So like right here, um, I have to flash on her to close the gap and it's still not enough because she gets me with a, a barrier bait there, even though if she didn't have barrier, I probably still would have died. But then she fails her jump and dies to Ezreal, so it didn't really matter all that much, but 
Um, that that was just a minor fail there. That was just me um, underestimating Tristana, but it was okay because my team was able to follow up here. And uh, they're uh, they're actually trying to they were trying to end the game here, and then it doesn't actually work out. I think they might get that tower. No, looks like they don't. Um, but then you know it just becomes uh, we just need to farm or we just need to push the waves and then end the game here. And so um, you know I do a little farming. I get the rates. I get the uh, I get the um, the red buff. We get a pretty cheeky kill on that uh, at least and so I decided to do a little pushing here because um, Rengar is an incredibly push good pusher when you have a little bit of AD like you know like 200 plus AD and uh, right here I get caught out um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna look at the mistake here so what I should have done here if you look they're removing pressure here if they would have kept pressure here on this inhibitor I would have been completely safe to keep pushing I get the tower and then they've lost their pressure here so they have no reason to keep defending here when they can just come and stop me here. So um, you can see Tristana hits me with an auto attack, hits me with the second auto attack, hits me with a third auto attack, throws the E on me, fourth, fifth. She's already used the Blade of the Rune King on me. Uh, J4 closes the gap, uses the ultimate. Tristana jumps on me, uses her ultimate. And uh, you can see that they've got pressure on the mid inhib now, but at this point I have died because I didn't have my ultimate up. If I would have had my ultimate up, it would have been a lot more safe to actually push there because I would have been able to get away, as well as I probably would have been able to kill the Trist. And if I kill the Trist, I'm probably not going to die there. And so uh, my team got pretty upset with me there. Like, you know, it was like, oh, we're going to lose. And I was like, are you serious? Like, you really think we're going to lose? You know, like, it'll be okay, team. And I think we, I think they actually, like, get dumpstered here. Let's see. Let's let's watch. Um, you know, Rise gets blown up. Blitzcrank is dead. Yeah, Tristana, I'm pretty sure she just goes ham here. So, um, you know, she's throwing down the Mad Deep. She's got the Infinity Edge. She's about to kill the Leona. The Leona pops, so she's got herself another jump, but I don't think she has quite enough mana for it. Um, but, uh, you know, she... Oh, she ends up getting just enough mana to jump there. And so there's a nice little fight here. She actually flashes in to make sure that she can get uh, old uh, 13 Utcrack there with the kill. But then Zed says, nope, it's all mine. And then they end up... Um, getting Zach here um, right after his passive is used up and that this is when my team was like oh no we're gonna lose like what are you doing I was like team please and so this was again uh, my mistake here you know of course it's a lot easier to analyze once you actually look back at the game but I needed to get more armor here um, and I think I actually sell the Kindle gem for a warden's mail yeah, yeah, um, but I did upgrade my to my black cleaver when I probably should have done that. I probably should have kept with the brutalizer and then tried to get some serious armor advantage, like a, maybe a random atonement if I could afford it, um, because that would actually help me a lot against uh, Tristana. But adding the warden's mail is, was really, really good because it'll lower her attack speed as well as if I can get a good W off, it'll give me um, around 190 armor, um, which is incredibly strong against her right now since she does not have a last whisper. So uh, we decided to group as a team at this point. And I think, I think we're actually getting pretty close to the end of the game here. So, um, you know, this was game one of my uh, my series to platinum. Um, if you if you guys aren't sure who's gonna win here, I'll give you a hint. Uh, you know, I, we do end up taking the victory here. So, um, I just want to say, you know, I really do appreciate all the support you guys have given me. Um, I hope you're enjoying this kind of like more full length game analysis. They. Uh, they're a bit they're a bit rough on the on the vocal cords here because I have to you know talk over the whole game and explain what I'm doing. Um, but I really do hope you enjoy it. I'm trying to improve them. So if you have any comments, uh, suggestions, you know, definitely post those in the comments below. And I'll be sure to post my other games from my platinum series, uh, even if I do lose. Because if you guys saw that Jack's gameplay, you know, I'm, I'm willing to post games where I lose. But um, you know, I thought this was a pretty cool uh, first game for my uh, um, promotion series to plat. So. Uh, as always, guys, stay classy and keep winning. And again, you know, I really do appreciate all the support you guys give.